It's not uncommon to find vintage motherboards from the 1990s with bloated capacitors. Bloated capacitors occur when the motherboard manufacturer uses cheap capacitors. Today, I'm going to show you how you can repair bloated capacitors and make your motherboard good as new. Let's get started. Well, the first order of business is to determine which capacitors are actually bloated. You can see this by visually just having a look at the board and seeing which capacitors have a little bulge on top. The ones with the bulge are definitely bad and need to be replaced. You can also replace all the capacitors on your motherboard and this is what I recommend doing, but if you're just trying to do it on the cheap, you can get away with replacing only the bad capacitors. Now that we've determined which capacitors are actually bad, we need to figure out what values they are so we can find adequate replacements. See this part of the capacitor, circled here? That's what the value of the capacitor is, and we need to find new capacitors with those same values. Let's break down what these numbers actually mean. First of all, the voltage. The voltage can be the same or higher on the replacement capacitor. So for example, this is a 10 volt capacitor we could get a capacitor that's 16 volts and it would work just fine. But you can never go lower with voltage. Then you'll run into problems. Next up, we need to find the microfarads of the capacitor, or the UF. As you can see here, this one is 1500 microfarads. So we need to find a capacitor that is also 1500 microfarads. You cannot substitute microfarads by going with higher ones or lower ones. It must be the same. Okay, so now we've got our capacitor values. We need to actually buy the capacitors now, which is pretty easy. After a quick Google search, we're presented with a bunch of results and you can just buy them online. Just make sure to get electrolytic capacitors. And here they are. Once your capacitors arrive, make sure they are in fact the right values. You are relying on humans after all. And now it's time for the fun bit, actually replacing the capacitors. You're going to need a soldering iron for this. You can get those for really cheap online, so yeah. You're also going to need some solder. As you can see I'm just using some solder here. And you'll also need some solder sucking tools. You can either use the braid or one similar shown here. Now we need to go ahead and flip the board over and locate the capacitor's legs on the back. Now we're going to go ahead and desolder the capacitors. It's always good to apply a bit of fresh solder first, so that way when you heat it up it all melts evenly and since there's more solder there it works better. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the solder sucker and suck up the majority of the solder. As you can see there, it worked pretty well. Don't worry, we will need to come back and clean these holes up. And I'll repeat this process for the rest of the legs. There should be minimal solder on the legs at this point, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and heat them up a bit and then give the capacitor a little wiggle. As you can see, this will clearly bring the capacitor out quite easy and is a really good method. I'll do this with both capacitors. Now that the capacitor's out, we can clearly see how destroyed these things are and how cheap they were at the time. They're very bulged and in bad condition. Time for the replacements. As you can see here, I've gone ahead and cleaned up the holes a bit too. Just using the soldering iron and solder sucker a few more times on the bare holes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and insert the new capacitors. But before we do, just remember that the longer lead is always positive and the shorter lead is negative. As for which way to put them on the board, the side with the white legend is always the negative side, so just put the longer lead where there's no legend. And then just go ahead and insert the capacitors into the holes, making sure to follow the legend. 
This is pretty easy to do. And again, just make sure you put the right capacitor values in the right places and you refer to the legend constantly. Make sure they're flush too. Once that's done, go ahead and flip the motherboard over and then bend the capacitor legs out slightly so they stay in place. Now it's time to solder in the new capacitors. When soldering, one of the key things to remember is to let the part leg heat up before you apply solder. This ensures a good bond and a connection that'll last for a long time. Just take your time when soldering. Don't be in a rush. Now go ahead and get some side cutters, pliers or toenail clippers and snip off the excess leads. Just be careful when doing this and don't slip because you could ruin the board. But it's pretty safe. And there we go. We've successfully replaced the capacitors. Now to see what it looks like on the top side. But before we do, remember to make sure to take away the excess leads. And would you look at that. Brand new, hey. No more bulging capacitors. We've successfully fixed up this Socket 370 motherboard. This is an MSI motherboard, so it was definitely worth fixing, and wasn't too hard either. I hope you got something out of this video, and I'll see you next time.